Hello, this is a description of the uh, aircraft set on display at MRCG 2001, Camp San Luis Obispo. We'll start over here with an uh, RC-36 aircraft intercom. Up to 12 stations can be tied together. This is one station here, you'll see another station at the far end. But the intercom has a compass position where you can listen to the compass receiver and the headphones, or you can listen to the liaison set, or you can listen to the command receivers, which are turned on in the headphones, or you can go to intercom and talk to the other operator, or if the other operator is busy somewhere else, you can switch over here, override his circuit and call it. My good friend and co-pilot, Bjorn Forsberg, will be operating this end of the intercom. Next, we have an ARN-59 three-band automatic direction receiver. It's kind of noisy here, so we're not getting any, any bearings. But this little receiver operates on 28 volts, covers 190 to 1750 kilocycles. The meter will indicate where the station that you're receiving is. Next, we look at the command set. The command set consists of an 80 meter transmitter, 40 meter transmitter, usual antenna switching relay, and the original command set, the uh, A61. This is a 5 ohm, 50 watt load. Actual antenna current is read on the meter here, whereas this indication here is nearly lower. Over here we have three receivers, 80 meters, the low frequency, and 40 meters. Transmitter control box, and the transmitters can be controlled either from the intercom or from the uh, local control here. Right now we're on the CW, we're on 80 meters, and you'll see that we have output and audio. Almost 3 amps on 38.85. We go 40 meters, key it, and you can see we have almost 2.8 amps on uh, 40 meters. Next, we come to the ART-13. The ART-13 is a 2 to, 30, uh, 2 to 18 megacycle transmitter using a BFO, or in this case, it's an ART-13B with an extended range circuit, which takes it down to 1.6 megacycles. This unit here, the CDAT, has a bank of 20 crystals for high frequency and four different crystals for low frequency. Right now we're set up on channel 4A, which is 1803 KC, 160 meters. We do it, and we see we got our F output. You might notice that the transmitter system switch is on tune. If we go to operate, we go to a little higher power. And on TNA ART-13 from the second of our two intercom stations. Bjorn, would you join me over there on intercom station number one? Co-pilot Bjorn. Bjorn, I'm calling you on uh, intercom. You hear me? Roger, I hear you. I don't care. Uh, Roger, we're both on intercom now. Bjorn, go over to command, and I'll go to liaison, and we'll key our transmitters. Okay, Bjorn, the co-pilot from Sweden, is on the command position of the intercom. He, the transmitter. He's got output on the command set. Hold it down, modulate it, and while he's doing that, I will key the ART-13. He is controlling the command sets. I'm keying the ART-13. Simultaneous operation. If we had 10 other positions, any one of these guys could do anything they want. Command, liaison, compass, or intercom. Now we take a look at the... Uh, thank you, Bjorn. You may continue monitoring, or you may go to 40 meters, or you may go to lunch. Next, we see the transmitter servo. We're operating the AT-13 on local control. We'll switch from channel 4 to channel 5. You notice, I switch to CW also. You notice the red light is off. All the servos are driving down towards the home position, zero position. Now they're driving up and looking for the presets. These three or four have found the presets. The VFO has found the presets. 
Now it's going to stop position, the red light comes on, the dynamotor is on, and the transmitter is operational. Whoops, should be operational. We have RF output from the PRT. Key it again. We Maybe. could key it over here with the test switch. We could plug in a throttle switch and key it. Or we could use the push the talk on the mic going directly into the mic. Go ahead and key it one. There we go. In this case, we're going to get off the power. In this case, we're keying it from position.